Interesting fact, 40% of Vancouver's total population is made up of Im immigrants. The city has also the highest proportion of Asians per capita of any North American city. Vancouver's historic Chinatown is one of the largest in North America. I'm here for the first time and so excited to see all those famous top tourist attractions as well as to explore a little beyond this vibrant city. Start your day with the Granville Island. Even though it's more of a peninsula, it feels like a peaceful getaway from the city hustle. It's famous for outdoor sports, great dining, and shopping. To reach Granville Island, you can take an aqua bus ferry or a taxi. The aqua bus operates every five minutes from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., running from the Harbin Street dock to Granville Island. The aqua bus is a unique and very Vancouver way to travel, and this water views of Vancouver amazing. Once you're on Granville Island, make beeline from the renovated Granville Island public market. It's a perfect for leisurely stroll and catching street performers. Don't miss the chance to grab a drink by the waterfront while enjoying the Vancouver skyline views. Is it truly a wonderful? spot to hang out and soak in the positive vibes. And by the way, when visiting Granville Island, seafood is the way to go, the perfect lunch spot. To reach Stanley Park from Granville Island, it's best to take an Uber, which should take around 15 minutes. Stanley Park is really big, covering 4 square meters. With so much to see and to do here, biking is the way to go. Walking everything in one afternoon isn't realistic. Stanley Park is on a peninsula, bordered by water on three sides, so you can ride the famous seawall, which runs along the coast and gives awesome views of mountains, the ocean and Vancouver skyline. The bike trail is 12 kilometers long and takes around one and a half to two hours for the whole loop. This is one of the best ways to spend an afternoon in the city. And considering all the amazing food in Vancouver, a bit of exercise can be quite refreshing. All right, for your second morning in Vancouver, you have two options, Lean Canyon or Catalano Suspension Bridge. Both offer stunning views, so you can't go wrong. If you had to pick, I would say Capilano is more gorgeous. However, Lin Canyon is free, which is great if you are in a budget. Lin Canyon is up in North Vancouver and has well-kept hiking trails. Thomas Twin Falls or the scenic 30 foot fall. There's a 50 meter high suspension bridge here that gives amazing canyon views. The trails are marked well and connected, so you don't need to be an expert hiker. How to get here? Well, sea bus runs every 10 minutes during peak times and every 15 to 30 minutes otherwise. And in case if you got a day ticket to use public transportation, it would work here too. It's time to head to Grouse Mountain. There's so much to do here and the views are incredible. To reach Grouse Mountain, take the Sky Ride Gondola. It's a must-do attraction year-round. The Grouse Mountain Gondola station is only 3.8 kilometers from Capilano Suspicion. Sky Ride tickets to Grouse Mountain are $81 for adults and while it might seem pricey, there is a lot included with your ticket. Along with the gondola ride, you also get access to various entertainment. On the mountain, there are shows and seasonal attractions included. Day three should be all around the city. Spend more time wandering around downtown. If history intrigues you, your next stop should be the Vancouver Art Gallery in downtown. This neoclassical building, first constructed in 1906, this isn't only famous for its vast collection of local and global art, but also its stunning architecture. Inside, you'll find significant pieces by renowned Canadian artists like Emily Carr and the Group of Seven. The gallery also features changing exhibits from artists worldwide, ensuring there's always something new to see. The building itself is a masterpiece with intricate stonework and grand ornate windows. In fact, the Vancouver Art Gallery is so iconic that experts in window replacement in Vancouver often use it as a prime example of windows enhancing, a building historic and aesthetic value. The detailed windows let sunlight in, creating a unique ambience that elevates the art view and experience. After exploring, unwind at the gallery cafe, amend sculptures and flowers, enjoying a meal of coffee in a serenchment sitting. All in all, if you are into architecture or history, the Vancouver Art Gallery is a must-see. This is Olympic Caldro, massive modern Olympic torch built for the 2010 Winter Games, and it is right next to Canada Place. Canada Place is a much-loved and iconic structure in Vancouver, standing out amidst the city's skyscrapers like a legend among them. Its design features white sails that give a distinct picturesque charm, setting it apart along Vancouver's waterfront. The innovative design is truly eye-catching. You can spot it from the seawall in Stanley Park or from the North Wall, showcasting its uniqueness. 
Gastown, an upbeat Vancouver neighborhood, comes alive at night. It's a hotspot for dining and drinking with restaurants and bars lining the streets. Interestingly, Gastown's lively nighttime scene isn't a recent thing. Back in the day, when Vancouver was just a logging town, this was the city's red light district. While it's cleaner now, a touch of that historical gift remains. Here we go. This was my interlude for three days in Vancouver. This city has a lot to offer, so please make sure to plan ahead and book tours and tickets weeks before your travel day. The only thing is not off my bucket list is the game. And if you are traveling during game season, please don't miss this out.